So I just saw The Batman. Here are my thoughts. It's really good. More than any other comic book movie, this film was able to replicate the feel of a graphic novel. This was mainly due to the location of the film. If you've seen anyone else talk about The Batman, and if you're watching this video, you definitely have, you'll know that Gotham has been the primary aspect of the film that has been unanimously praised. Whoever scouted locations for this film deserves a raise. It was a stroke of genius to shoot the Batman in Liverpool, Glasgow and London, and it also explains why so many of the characters in the film are portrayed by British actors. Point being, Gotham has never looked better. Or worse, is the more apt description. Another person who deserves a raise for this film is whoever cast all the characters. Every character in this film is perfectly cast and every actor brings their A-game to the film. Now I'll hold my hand up. I'll take myself to the headmaster's office and take my lashings. I was one of the people who wasn't a fan of Robert Pattinson being cast as Batman. Yeah, I know that he's been in a bunch of films and apparently he was really good in them, but I'd never seen them. So all I had to go off was, yes I know, his performance in the Twilight Saga. Now before everyone beats me up and throws me in a ditch somewhere, I was not one of those people who thought he was going to ruin the film or even give a bad performance. I was just skeptical and didn't think he was right for the role. Now after seeing the film, I'm going to say this. Robert Pattinson is my favourite Batman. He is perfect in the role, or at least perfect as a young Batman. Time will hopefully tell about how he is as an older, more mature Batman, but for now in this film, he was exceptional. Now there has been some criticism for his portrayal of Bruce Wayne, but I completely disagree with this criticism. From what I understand of the source material concerning his earlier years as Batman, Robert Pattinson's performance is pretty accurate. There was no distinction between Batman and Bruce Wayne because Batman didn't know what he was doing and like with this film, was unsure of how best to approach Gotham's problems. I, mean, I just think the traditional telling of the Batman story, he's, he's, it's always been he's got really, really control, it's like a lot of control over his personas and there's his Playboy persona and then there's Batman and then there's Bruce at home. And I just thought that in the script that was the first thing I noticed because you, he's not a Playboy at all and so it kind of opens up a million different opportunities where he hasn't, he doesn't really know who he is as Batman or as Bruce. And there's this kind of crossover between the whole thing. The defining factor of Batman a lot of the times is his control over himself and, and he's mastered himself. And in this, he hasn't mastered it at all, but he thinks he has. He proved that my fears were unfounded and I really hope that we get to see more of his Batman. Catwoman was another character whose casting left me skeptical as I only knew Zoe Kravitz from that one X-Men film and she definitely got overshadowed in that film. But just like Robert Pattinson, I was pleasantly surprised by how naturally she fit the character. This is absolutely Catwoman, and with the exception of how anxious I felt whenever her really sharp nails got close to Robert Pattinson's face, I could not fault her performance or character. There is a familial reveal involving Catwoman that I wasn't too fond of. It felt very, oh okay, instead of, oh. Also, I feel like Batman and Catwoman's relationship progresses too far too quickly, but these are minor gripes. Jeffrey Wright continues to establish himself as one of the most consistently fantastic actors working right now. Wright's Gordon is a man beaten down by the corruption rampant in Gotham, willing to do whatever it takes to restore Gotham and turn it into a safe place. This Gordon doesn't trust anyone except Batman, and the film does a great job of explaining why Gordon is the way he is, and Jeffrey Wright perfectly wraps it all up in a neat bow. Before seeing the film I had heard some negative chatter surrounding Alfred. This wasn't due to Andy Serkis' performance as the beloved butler, but instead his limited screen time. So I went into the film expecting to receive very little from Alfred, but instead left loving this interpretation of the character. Yes, he's not in the film as much as you would expect from Batman's little helper, but whenever he is, Andy Serkis commands the screen. He feels like a softer, gentler, kinder version of Sean Pertwee's interpretation of the character from the Gotham TV show, which I did see and did enjoy. They even kind of look like each other. Hopefully in the sequel, Alfred gets a lot more screen time. One casting choice I was very excited about was Paul Dana as the Riddler, and boy did he deliver. I've long wanted to see a Batman film with a more serious incarnation of the Riddler, and it was his presence in the film that excited me most. Now I love Jim Carrey and that one scene in Batman Forever where he had an erection as much as the next guy, but Paul Dano is exactly what I've always wanted the Riddler to be. He feels like Jigsaw, especially when he traps some guy in a glass contraption and puts a bomb collar around some poor guy's neck. But the film never forgets that this is the Riddler, and the riddles as well as unanswered questions take centre stage in this film. Sometimes the riddles and the saw traps go hand in hand. The film does a great job when it comes to the riddles in the film. They are hard enough that most people in the audience won't come even close to getting the answer, but clearly well thought out enough by the writers that you end up going, oh, I get it now. 
There wasn't a single answer to any of the riddles that made me go, Oh, shut up. That's dumb. That's silly. That doesn't make sense. That, 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 that's, that's dumb. No, 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 I don't accept that. All of them left me feeling like I was an idiot for not getting them. The Batman also makes the intelligent decision of doing the Sherlock Holmes John Watson rule by having a smart character, in this case Jim Gordon being Watson, not knowing the answers so that you as an audience member don't feel as dumb. Very clever on the right's part doing that. I did get the rat with wings being a bat riddle though, so I guess I'm not completely stupid. Who haven't I mentioned yet? Oh that's right, Colin Farrell killed it as Penguin. That's another actor I was sceptical as to whether they could pull off the ca their character or not. Actually, with the exception of Paul Dano as the Riddler, I was sceptical about all the casting in this film. Again, give whoever hired these people a raise. So as I was saying, Colin Farrell was pitch perfect as Penguin in this film. He didn't play as big a role as I was expecting, but I ultimately believed that he was the right choice. Like with Alfred, less was more. In addition to Paul Dano's The Riddler, there was another very exciting feature to this film, and it was the presence of director Matt Reeves. Matt Reeves to be something of a rising star in the directing world, and I was very interested by what Gotham and Batman would look like through his lens, and in my opinion, he delivered the best adaptation of these characters and this world. There were so many beautiful shots in this film, but there were two scenes in particular that really stood out to me. The first is the much spoken about car chase between the Batman and the Penguin, and the second being the big climatic fight right at the end of the film. I love both these scenes because they perfectly illustrate who Batman is. Batman is this unstoppable force that you cannot escape. He will hunt you down and he will get you. If you think about it, Batman is basically the Terminator. Yeah, he can get hurt and as the film shows he can mess up, but he will not stop until he's completed his mission and you better not get in his way. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel fear. And it absolutely will not stop. Ever. Also, this film has a great soundtrack, as you already know, if you've seen any of the promotional material for this film. Finally, before I let you lovely people go, there are a few spoilery things that I want to talk about. So if you haven't seen The Batman, then just turn the volume on the video all the way down, and just let it play in the background so that I can get the watch time, please. Okay, for starters, I love that the Riddler wins in this film, or at least half wins. I know the film kind of presents it as him still losing since he's crying in his prison cell at the end of the film. But the dude flooded Gotham. Now that's a win in my book. If Bane won in The Dark Knight Rises, then Riddler won here. I don't care if in both cases Batman was able to regain control. To me, the Riddler won in this film. Also, does everyone know that Bruce Wayne is Batman now? Because Riddler knows. And he sure says the name in front of that camera a lot. I mentioned earlier that I wasn't a fan of the familial reveal of Catwoman being Falcone's daughter, but as I was writing this script, it seems that familial relationship is present, or at least alluded to in the comics, so I'm not going to complain about it. I will complain about the age rating. This shouldn't have been a 15. In the UK, this film was essentially rated R, because apparently we're pussies. This film should have got the same age rating here as America, but whatever. I also love that we get to see goons in this film. We get the super villain goons that are very reminiscent of the fools you beat up in the Arkham games. Speaking of Arkham, I really, really hope that wasn't Joker next to the Riddler. Now, I'm not one of those people who is all jokered out. In fact, I really want to see the Joker go, go up against Batman. I, go, I really want to see the Joker go up against Robert Pattinson's Batman, in fact. The reason why I hope that this isn't Joker is because I wasn't a fan of the portrayal and the apparent direction they seem to be going with the Joker. It worked for Riddler, I don't think that it will work for Joker. But that's just me, okay? Let it be Mad Hatter or Two-Face or someone else, please. Is there any other spoiler stuff I want to talk about? I don't think so. I guess I'm done. The Batman met my expectations and delivered exactly what I wanted. Nothing more, nothing less. If you like Batman, watch The Batman. Anyway, like and subscribe. Bye.